Could a spark of your love light a fire in me? Just a spark warm my cold heart. Is the living that breathe? Good afternoon. This is Pastor Chris Thompson back here on a Friday afternoon. We're shooting here at Christ Central. It's 19 West Shannon in Spokane, Washington. If you are anywhere in the vicinity and are looking for a place to worship this Christmas season, you're invited to come worship with us. 11.30 a.m. each and every Sunday morning. Now, on Fridays, we take a few minutes and we go through and give you what we call a devotional that is based on the sermon we'll be talking about Sunday morning. So if you can't be here with us on a Sunday and you need to catch up, this is a great way to do it. And of course, if you don't know anything about our church, this is a great way for us to get to know each other just a little bit. Either way, we pray God is richly blessing you this week. Well, today's passage comes from Acts chapter 10. Now, it's fairly long, and so I'll put some of the passages on the screen here, uh, but probably not all of them. So if you have a Bible, you might want to follow along Acts chapter 10. Now, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. We'll actually be focusing, at least on Sunday, uh, from verses 22 to 48. Uh, but you need a little bit of like a head start as to what's happening. Verses 1 through 21, there are actually two main characters. There's Cornelius, and he is a soldier, and clearly not Hebrew. And there is Peter, and he is one of the, um, the, the apostles, and he is a Hebrew and, and now has come into the Christian faith and is one of the, the pillars that is starting the church. And they each have a vision. Cornelius' vision is that he needs to send some men to go and bring Peter to him, which is, of course, not going to go very well culturally. And Peter's vision is a little different. Peter's vision is he sees this, this cloth, this sheet, and it's being lowered from heaven. And, and as it gets lower, he can see that inside this sheet are all manner of beasts and, and birds and animals. He is a Hebrew, Hebrew of Hebrews. And so when he looks at those animals, he realizes that they're not clean according to Old Testament law. Yet, in his vision, the father says, uh, take one of these animals, kill and eat it, consume this animal. Pick the one that you want. Peter looks at all that and says, these are unclean animals. I can't do that. God tells him those days are gone. There are no unclean animals anymore. And then the vision gets ready to end and right, right at the very end he, he says you're going to receive a visitor and you need to go and teach about me, Christ, to this centurion. And the vision ends. And that's kind of where we pick up our story. Now, in our story, what happens is Cornelius has absolutely gone and sent his men to collect Peter. And as the men come um, and they, they're knocking on, on Peter's door, and he's got some, some people in the house there with him, and Peter says, yeah, I'll absolutely go. I'll, I'll, I'll go meet with Cornelius. And he invites all the people that are there with him, people that were kind of his followers, that were learning from him, other believers, Hebrew believers, we find out later. And they go to the centurion's house, and they sit down with him. And Peter starts off by explaining that even being in the same presence with him is actually breaking Old Testament law, yet he's seen this vision, and he knows that those things are passing away, and that relationship is not unclean anymore. And so he goes ahead and he shares with Cornelius. Now, interestingly enough, uh, on Sunday, we're going to break down exactly what he shares, but I'll, I'll summarize it here. He teaches about Christ and his perfect life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We typically refer to that story as the gospel, and that's exactly what he lays out um, for Cornelius. And you know, as you read this story, I, I can't help but get joy 
inside me as I even shared and think about what that might have, must have meant for Cornelius. And as Peter breaks through this invisible, visible barrier of who he's allowed to be friends with and who is allowed to accept the love of Christ, he breaks through all those barriers. And so the story would be great if that's the entire story, right? But that's not where it ends. The last little bit I find to be the most valuable part of the whole thing, the thing that brings me the most encouragement. It says that everyone who was there, that was in hearing, everyone who was in a place where they could hear Peter's sermonette, everyone who could hear, the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they were saved. That means that some of the people that were just Cornelius' friends, his buddies, his family, and some of the people who were already religious, that were already hanging out with Peter, those people as well, they came to the faith right then and the Holy Spirit indwelled. Peter then turns and he says, what in the world can stop us from going right outside and baptizing all these new believers? Again, breaking Old Testament law. He does it anyway because all the old is past and the new has come. There's nothing unclean, and so he takes them out and baptizes them, and Cornelius' entire family, his whole oikos, comes to the faith that day. If that's not an encouraging story for you, I don't know what is. If you're like me and you are a believer and you're attempting to follow Christ and do your absolute best, and yet some people around you have not come to faith along with you, I want to encourage you that when you're given the opportunity like Peter was here to not be ashamed of the gospel but to sit down and share it even if those around you think that you've gone about it in a strange way. Certainly Peter's friends would have thought so here. Well, That's my encouragement for you this week. If there's someone you love that you would love to share your faith with, I encourage you to do it in the way that they would understand whether or not I do or anyone else does. But don't forget, it's death, burial, resurrection, and the entrance of the Holy Spirit. That's it, the whole sum of the gospel. Well, I pray this has been some encouragement to you. I love spending my Friday afternoons with each and every one of you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment box below this video. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next week. When I breathe in hope and breathe in grace and breathe